Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Rise Above TV, where we are empowering humanity and supporting unity. You're watching P3, the place where we feature individuals who have tapped into their power, passion, and purpose. I'm your host, Janie Terrazas, and today we have the lovely Lisa Hurst. She is the creator, the artist, the maestro of Improv to Grow, and I'm looking forward to hearing what she has to say about power, passion, and purpose. Thank you so much, Lisa, for being with us today. Thank you, Janie, for having me. This is such a treat. I'm excited to see what kind of fun talk we'll have today, and you always have such beautiful, wise words to share with people, especially when it comes to living intentionally, authentically, deliberately, mindfully. Tell us a little bit about improv to grow and about yourself and and what power passion and purpose mean to you all right well thank you again for this opportunity so yeah so improv to grow is uh, turned into this really amazing offering where you can get in touch connect with yourself and with others and collaborate so that you can create something new a new environment a new culture so what I do is I have the opportunity to hold space for transformation, for people to authentically connect with themselves and how that uh, plays out into their life professionally and personally and how people show up. And so I use elements that, train, that have been trained people to go on stage and perform improv as, as we know it, like whose line is it anyway? but to take those elements and those, those different uh, exercises into how do you fine tune your communication skills? So it is life-giving, it is healthy, it is fun in that you find yourself in the midst of this going, okay, let's, let's find the greater good in this relationship and finding the yes in a really dark, maybe in a very dark conversation or a dark time, but there's still opportunities. So it's, it's really, it's challenging, but it's wonderful to watch people really connect and find that authentic connection with themselves and their community. Yeah, so many people struggle with uh, public speaking. And mm -hmm. so, and then, and just being really real and then not having words, you know, ahead of time. People have a really hard time uh, with being present and in the moment. And this art form, improv, is a combination of so many different things that are allowing a person to flex all of these fears, <laughs> you know? And so I can see how a person would build self-esteem and confidence on top of, you know, learning how to listen um, better and speak more concise and with more intentionality. How did you... I guess, find your love for it? Like, were you always into acting as a young child or is this something that you stumbled across <laughs> as an adult? Because most people that, you know, are living their power, passion and purpose, a lot of times they don't already know at a very young age what it is. Something ends up happening and then you're like, oh my God, I would have never guessed I'm, I'd be doing this for a living. <laughs> well, this is, this is the greatest thing. So I had my own personal transformation story from this because I did not grow up wanting to be on stage. Half the time, it's still, um, it's a healthy balance of nerves, but it's, it's like that's not my natural go-to. So I understand when people are coming to for presentation preparation that I off offer in coaching, I completely understand all of those butterflies, all of that uh, nervousness, those, those nervous tendencies. And so I saw an improv troupe years ago, back last century, um, at a youth ministry conference. And I didn't know what that was. And then I had an opportunity to, to train back in 07, 08 here in town and spent about 13, 12, 13 years uh, performing, if not every week, every other week in a rehearsal. And I loved it and really enjoyed the, the teamwork and the collaboration but I still dealt with some, some nervous behaviors and not so much that it was incapacitating, but it's just like, oh. So that's, to be all honest, is for me to be on stage like that. I love it, but I don't, I don't know. It's not, um, I feel like I've got the, the, the kernel of truth for me out of that time was the connection piece and that authentic, I keep going back to authenticity, but when 
you're on stage collaborating with your team, if you don't show each other off and make each other look good and find agreement and build on this art form that there's no script, there's no, there's no order, there's no props. And so we have to, we're world builders. And I think that was the thing that I got to tap into very early is to realize oh, we can create anything if we're committed to it and we're confident about it. And so I love that storytelling aspect of it. And that's so transferable, not just in, in on stage, but in everyday life of, you know, what stories are we living into? What stories do we want to strive towards? How do we want to show up? And how do we collaborate with the, the people around us so that we, we create the life that we really want to live into and, and be part of? And so, yeah, so to be on stage, honestly, I do it and I, and I love certain aspects of it, but performance wise, I'm okay <laughs> if I don't get up on stage all the time. Where I know many performers who have to, and, and they have to be up there, and that is that is their passion. Yeah. And that is awesome. I recognize the balance in my life. And so my stage is the facilitation of groups and having that opportunity, like I said earlier, to hold space for transformation. Setting the table, you know, setting, you know, getting the room ready, getting all those things ready so that people can engage in a shift in their mindset, maybe a new idea, maybe a new way of looking at, at their everyday life that they hadn't thought about before, the stuff that's holding them back from where they really wanna be, you know, where they really wanna live into that intentional living out of their purpose, out of their passion. And, and so it's just, it's exciting because I can see the before and the afters. I thought I'd love to see, you know, different clients with their befores and afters and, and letting, letting them explore that space to go, okay, wow, wow, I never thought of it that way. I didn't even know I was holding myself back. I didn't even know that was even doable to let go of those old, old ways of thinking to embrace a new possibility and create, like I said earlier, world, build the world you want to live into. So. Yes, absolutely. There was so much that you said just in that, that is so powerful, especially with where civilization and society and the world is at right now. How did you get started in, in this line of work and where did, yeah, where did you start with improv to grow? So I started facilitation about 20 years ago and I was using that on the ropes course. So the challenge courses where people would climb, you know, and do, do low elements and then do the higher elements and, um, and was able to fine tune my facilitation skills there. Again, climbing, I can do it, but I don't have to. It's kind of one of those things that the kernel of truth for me was watching groups come through. We'd have the same exercise and each group would do that exercise a little differently. And that was fascinating to say, what, what's different about the group back at the office, perhaps, because it was corporate training. What's going on back there that they would do this whole initiative completely different than the group that it, the, from the day before. And so that was, that was my secret sauce of trying to figure out how to, to navigate and help groups tap into their strengths by addressing their weaknesses so that when they go back to the office, then they, they're like, oh, well, this is, we have another choice to, to uh, solve this problem or be open-minded to it. Yeah. And so I did that for several years. And then as I got into improv, Come to find out there's applied improv, which is basically using the exercises that we prep to go on stage for team building. So I had the experiential education piece over here and then the applied improv piece. And so they're like fraternal twins, the fraternal twins. So anytime I do groups uh, and, and individual work, but anytime I do groups, I'll, I will definitely modify per group what is needed. And I usually do about a third experiential education and about two thirds applied improv. And depending on how the groups deal with their acceptance or resistance of the, the initiatives and the activities um, depends on the next step. And so for me, after facilitating for so long, I can sort of, there's some markers of like, oh yeah, they're gonna get this or oh no, this is, this is really gonna be challenging for them and that's okay. And to be okay with that, go well 
that's what they need to learn. And that's what, that's why they're here is to go through that in a safe environment because I create a safe environment so people can engage and grow at a, at a deeper level than what they would at some other modalities and some other opportunities. So, so yeah, so I, I've been doing this for about 20 years and it's just, uh, it's, I've learned a lot. I've seen a lot. I haven't seen it all, but I've seen a lot. And so I, I'm fascinated. I'm just fascinated where people are coming from and, and what people are committed to individually, what they're committed to and, and group wise, what they're committed to moving forward, having, you know, being solution based and solu- you know, the mindset is solution mindset or, or not. And there's fruit from both, both of those camps. So it's very, uh, it's, I just love it. I just love to see how people react and respond to, to these offerings and these challenges and how it impacts their life at work, but mainly at home because we're home. Hopefully we're home more than uh, at work, but to have that work-life balance to, yeah. so that you can authentically show up. You know, it sounds like um, a lot of this involves a level of humility. It's like you have to, we have to be able to practice humility uh, and vulnerability in this space because I think a lot of us have these ideologies around getting it right the first time and being perfect and good at something right off the bat. And there's this embarrassment that comes along in shame, which then ends up keeping us from trying new things. And so I would imagine that is really powerful work for you to see uh, people be, and which is another part of the psychological aspect of things. You can see who has an easier time surrendering and who has an easier time making mistakes or looking a little silly versus the ones that are trying to keep it all together. You know, there's a correlation to, to that. Mm-hmm. Well, and so, so real fast, some principles of the applied improv is, you know, finding the yes and, um, which is everybody kind of has an idea about what that is, but I've distilled it down so that it's, Finding agreement and building on it, basically. You find something, a kernel of truth, I go back to that, the kernel of truth and you build on it and you try it, you try it out. And by doing that and having that collaborative mindset where you're like, I'm going to make you look good, Janie, and I know you're going to make me look good. If somebody throws out a a crazy idea, it seems crazy, they're like, oh, let's try it out. Because a friend of mine goes, let's go ugly first and see if that works. And if it doesn't, then we know that doesn't work. Um, so the third part, so there's the, the yes and, then there's the collaborative mindset where I'm going to make you look good. The fourth, the third thing is, is that fail, I like to call it failing forward. So it's, it's that take, taking a risk, taking a, a personal risk, taking a, a community risk in a way of like, yeah, we're going to try that out and oh, let's go ugly first and see what happens. But it's the, it's the taking of the risk. It's not make, making mistakes because that does happen. And if we don't prepare to make mistakes, then, then that's a big mistake right there because um, failure happens and it's how do you react and respond to it. And so, so there's that aspect to it, but it's, it's the actual part of taking the risk and it's, it's failing forward and learning from it. Because if you don't learn from it, you know, you're like, oh, so, so that's that risk taking where you go, oh, okay, let's try that out and see. And let's, and, and I always say, we're going to celebrate our learning. So it's a, it's, it's the image of the tightrope um, trapeze artist, or that sometimes they complete their initiative and then sometimes they don't, but the crowd still claps and celebrates because they took a risk, right? They took that risk. And I'm not saying, you know, with the, the, the yes and saying yes to everything, because I don't think you really should say yes to everything, but maybe there's a kernel of truth in there that can help move an idea forward for that community or, you know, for a greater collaborative, you know, solution minded uh, perspective for that issue. And, and so having that space where it's set, it's set in a way that's safe and life giving, that's, that's not always easy to do and navigate, but that is, that's, that's my job. And and that's when I say, you know, uh, hold space for transformation. That's, that's what I do. And that's what I love doing. It's like setting that table. You do a really good job of bringing sort of the, the left brain and the right brain into the space, the, the masculine and the feminine where you're creating structure Mm -hmm. and you're guiding them, but you're doing it with a lot of compassion 
And so you, you mentioned the word safe, you know, it's really about creating a safe space and people getting comfortable with the uncomfortable, which is really beneficial for us. This is a lot, this work has a lot to do with going inward and like becoming really self-aware of your body and, you know, your feelings and your thoughts and, and the way you're able to collaborate and or not collaborate. You mentioned something about noticing our weaknesses and our strengths. And I think it's really admirable of us to view these things and know that we all have the weakness and the strength. And so to be able to shine a light on it and strengthen it in the way we can is, is really cool. And this is just another way for people to do that. Do you feel like personally you were able to do that work within your relationship and then you brought it out into your, your, your field? Or were you discovering this in your field and then it was bleeding over into and improving your relationship with your partner? Wow, that's interesting. Um, it's kind of a both and. Uh, I would say in a relationship, you know, I was single the majority of my life until about 10 years ago. And so, you know, I just kind of do my thing and do, you know, do my thing. And, and having, being in relationship is, you know, going, oh, there's a, other opinions and other ideas to balance out. And, you know, just, I have to go back to being on stage and what you said about being comfortable with being uncomfortable. So I love the opportunities to speak. I love, I, 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 I want that. I, I really enjoy that time. And I've embraced that being comfortable with being uncomfortable, still being safe. And in the midst of, of my relationship with my husband, what's great is he'll throw some idea out like, well, let's do this. And I was like, no, I don't know about that. And then the more I think about it, I'm like, oh, that's really, that's so much better. Because like on stage, how that shows up is if I offer, you know, some, some great line or some, you know, kind of offer and my scene partner blocks it, then it takes the, it takes the air out of that scene and it's confusing to the audience. And it, you know, it's my scene partner. I'd be like, mm -hmm. it's hard to, to really want to collaborate. It makes it harder. And so in a relationship, what I've seen is like, where's that yes? Even though it's like, maybe not really thinking, I don't see how that's really going to work. But if I take a step back and breathe it out and go, okay, there is there is something there. And there's something that's going to be, you know, really even much better. And I've come to find out when I let that happen, things end up going a lot smoother or, or just much more life-giving as opposed to, no, this is my agenda and this is my way and, and everything. And so it's taken that time out to take a breather and go, where, where's that kernel of truth? Where is that little bit of yes in there that I can, I can jump on board and, and go with it. And so, yeah, it's, 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 it's not one without the other. It's, it's almost like uh, two sides of the same coin and you know, how you go, okay, how can I find the, how can I find the yes in this? Mm -hmm. Is there yes? There might not be yes, but if there is, go for it. And sometimes, like I said earlier, you have to go ugly first to find find the beauty in it. But um, that's funny that you say that because I I was just about to ask you. You mentioned that a couple of times. Can you explain what that means? Uh, because I I figure that's like improv lingo. Um. Yeah. I don't know if it's improv lingo, but it's 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 more of the the. Uh, team building facilitation lingo. So like if you're brainstorming and everybody's like, ugh, brainstorming and you know, put post-it notes up and everything's like, ugh. There's that that feeling of like, oh, people, somebody's gonna go in and go, no, 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 right? The sensor, the person that says no to everything. So what happens in a scene is like, if it's really kind of like, oh, I don't know, but we're all on board we'll know real fast, like, oh, okay, that was, that was fun, or that was, oh, drop that, or like, next scene, please. In a collaborative setting where it's like brainstorming, if you set it up and go, okay, let's go, let's, let's play with that for, let's extrapolate for about 15 minutes, 30 minutes on it, see potential. Hey, that's 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes in there going, oh, yeah, that works. Okay, no, it doesn't work let's let's go to the next one so okay. instead of going oh i like this one and i like this one and i like that one there could be elements of all four areas that be like that's the solution and so to go ugly first is to admit like knit and go let's just 
follow it, follow it until we're like, well, no, or this is, this is one piece we can add to this piece. Right. And so, um, yeah, so go ugly first. Because you love your work so much and you are an entrepreneur, you know, where do you find and, and that line, where do you draw the line for self-giving and then being, you know, a servant in your community, the way you are, what are some of like your self-care practices so that you make sure you stay, you know, grounded in your power, passion, and purpose? All right. So I started something uh, at the end of last year and it's called five by five. Mm -hmm. And, and there's uh, medical research on this out of uh, University of Texas out of Dallas, I think. And it's taking five minutes, five times a day, just to unplug, disconnect, and just do something different. And so the way I've taken that in, some people are like doing five, five times of meditation a day. I'm not that, I'm not that disciplined to do that. But five times a day, my goal is to do something different for five minutes, just to change up the scenery, the frequency, my energy, all of that. Uh, lately, because we are this time that we're, we're recording this, uh, mostly at home right now. So I try to go outside a couple times a day just to breathe in, breathe out, walk around my backyard, just kind of walk and just explore and see something maybe I haven't seen before. Not to go, oh, I've got to put that on a to-do list. Not to go, like, oh, I need to clean this area out. Just to look and see what's there. And by doing that, it's just helped me kind of recalibrate um, mm. the energy and just be in that space of like, oh, okay, this is, this is not all, there's so much more to life than just what's currently happening. And that has perspective of this is now, but I can always connect to myself anytime, no matter what's going on. And to take a time out to go, mm -hmm. I just need to breathe quietly to myself or just you know, sometimes I, I look for things that are the same color. So I'll look for something that's all purple or all green or whatever and see how many things I can see. It's, it's just fun little ways of engaging with my environment. Yes, mm. I love it. And nature nurtures. And, and that's, real, that's a real practical thing people can do. You know, sometimes we, we feel and think that when we instill these practices, you know, little healthy things for our mental health or emotional health, physical health, that it has to be something big and elaborate, but something as simple as that really helps the brain bring attention to like one thing and really helps bring you into the now, which is part of mindfulness, you know? So, um, and you're finding fun ways to do it. So that's good. It's really healthy for us. And that goes back to, you're talking about mindfulness. And one of the things I've gotten into with improv, and especially when I was performing, I've, I've taken a, a year or so off just to kind of recalibrate myself and where I want to spend my energy and time. I noticed when I was on stage, when I was really mindful or being, not trying to jump ahead, because that's the, that's the tricky part of performing improv is being in the moment and being at that, at that second of like, oh, I just saw his face react a different way or wow, that was it that without saying anything, perhaps they're mad or happy or glad or, you know, whatever. And taking that time out to go, oh, noticing those reactions. You do that in everyday life at the office and you're like, oh gosh, the way they put the papers down on the table, they're not happy about something. You know, you don't know what it is, but it's playing detective in a way. Um, and so I, I always like to say improv is like an active form of, of mindfulness because you really have to be present and just truly present in that, in that nanosecond to go, oh, okay. He said, the word said this, but his face said something else. You're like, huh, that's that interesting. And to kind of play with that. And so, yeah, you notice a lot of verbal, nonverbal um, tendencies with people to, that kind of share their true, sometimes share their true uh, feelings. Yeah, true feelings, true motivation. So, yeah. <laughs> And the body's like speaking, that's that subconscious mind that speaks through the body. And that's yeah. the thing that I love so much about improv is that part of the communication aspect is, is becoming very 
aware of people's nonverbals, like becoming aware of yours is one thing. And then it's like becoming aware of others. And I believe like they say 78% of communication is coming through nonverbal more than what we're actually saying. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's been a real interesting thing for me to learn when it comes to communication, because I'm real sensitive to nonverbals, you know, and I had to remember that it's not always what I think it is. So you have to like take that pause. Well, and a lot of people don't are not connected with their, their nonverbal, how they show up nonverbally. And that's, that's really interesting too, is, is people are delivering information, especially as I'm coaching you know, people for presentation skills and whatnot. It's, it's really fascinating because they're just not aware of it. And it's, and it's not the end of the world, but it's a disconnect that they didn't realize that, ah, oh, that's why people aren't, you know, they're not motivated after what I, you know, whatever I'm talking about, they're not motivated. I'm like, yeah, because your face is all like, you know, it's just, you know, so it's, it could, it could be something that simple, or it could be the tone, it could be, you know, the posture. And so it's, it's playing investigator, it's kind of fun to go, hey, have you tried this? Have you thought about this? And yeah. so just to help people, because ultimately, my, my, um, my passion is helping people have their message resonate with their audience, whatever their ideal audience is, you know, how, how can they be the best in touch with themselves authentically, but how can it connect with their audience? And, okay. and these people have amazing, their, 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 pers- their purpose and passions of what they want to do in the world, but yet whatever happened in the past has held them back. And it's just, it's just, um, oh, it's devastating, but yet it's a great opportunity to go, hey, you got to share this with the world. You know, you have to share this and, and let's work on ways to help you connect and, and, and fine tune your message in a way that it's just going to be like, wow, where have you been all of our lives? <laughs> you know, it's just like, I feel like people have kind of gotten a, uh, like a little detour. I think some of these things, get, people get detoured and, and just get lost mm-hmm. and just kind of, oh, it's always there. You, whatever your purpose is, whatever that passion is, that is, it needs to be in the world even more so now than ever. And so I just, I feel very strongly about like, let's, let's move past, let's address it. Let's forgive yourself, forgive the others and let's move forward, see what's going to happen. And, and the world needs to hear your, your programs, your your talks, your whatever, you know, your business, whatever your services are, they need that. The, The world needs that right now. That's one of the main reasons why I was inspired to do this show is because I feel like one of the ways we are going to heal the world is when each of us take the accountability and responsibility to return to our true essence and be the person we were intended to be and deliver the gifts that we were destined really to share with others. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't always have to be anything big and you have to start this big old business, but everybody does have something to give and to share. Where do you really feel power? What does that word signify to you as we start to wrap up this episode? So, I mean, my, my power is connected with God and I, you know, just being inspired to be of service and to glorify, to, glorify God in all that I do. And so that's, I just go back to that as this, my source of strength and, and uh, that connected, that authentic, authentic connection so that I know that uh, I'm not in this alone. He created me to be who I am. And by not tapping into those amazing gifts that he you know, has given me, then I'm, I feel like I'm letting go or not, not disappointing, but it's like, I'm not living up to all that I could do to, for his glory, not for my glory, but for his glory. Yes. And so for me, it's just having that as an opportunity to just be, be God's presence in the world, that peace, that comfort, that encouragement, all of those, all of those aspects. And so that's, that's my, I guess my power source right there. You are a masterpiece and you are creating your own masterpiece. Mm-hmm. Please let people know where they can connect with you. Yes, that would be great. I would love to uh, serve and support everyone. You can reach out to me at improvtogrow.com or any of the social media handles with improv to grow on it. 
And so I can help you with your public speaking, with uh, confidence coaching, with team building opportunities. And I look forward to um, meeting and serving you so that you can really find your message that authentically connects and resonates with your audience. Thank you so much, Lisa, and continued mm -hmm. success on all your beautiful endeavors. I'm looking forward to collaborating with you in the near future. Thank you so much for this opportunity. And thank you for tuning in to Rise Above TV, where we are empowering humanity and supporting unity. Be sure to tune in next week when we feature Barry Selby. He's a love coach, an author, a champion for the feminine. He's the creator of Messages from the Masculine, and he just has so much beautiful wisdom to share. I can't wait to hear what he has to say about power, passion, and purpose. Till next time, peace be in us.